GPT-5 system with the test time scaling. For the very first time, we have got some information about what GPT-5 might look like and that comes directly from Sam Altman. In this video, I'm going to break down everything that Sam Altman said about GPT-4.5 and GPT-5 as part of OpenAI roadmap update. Sam Altman tweeted just like few hours back saying this is the OpenAI roadmap update I'm going to tell you like certain important things that you have to understand from the tweet if you're not familiar with certain concepts. First of all, let's read the tweet and then let's break it down. OpenAI roadmap update for GPT 4.5 and GPT 5. We want to do a better job. This is like the usual Sam, Sam, Sam thing. And I'm, <laughs> I don't want to go again there. The most important thing here is that we hate the model picker as much as you do. I mean, I'm not sure if I hate it. Uh, I kind of like it, but anyways, I'm not part of that we and want to return to the magic of unified intelligence. We will next ship GPT 4.5, the model we called Orion internally as our last non chain of thought model. So there are certain things that we have to break down here. First of all, Sam says that they hate model picking as much as everybody else is doing. So what is the model picker? So if you have ever used chat GPT, you know that here you've got something where you select model GPT-4, oh, 4.0 with scheduled task, O1, O3, O3 mini, temporary chat, GPT-4, O mini, GPT-4. This is the model picker. And one of the easiest ways that they can get rid of this model picker here is to use something called model router. Model router is this concept where you have some kind of a classifier at the end, which is something that a lot of companies actually do. And a lot of projects that I've consulted for companies whenever they want to implement a solution, one thing that we usually say is you have to have some kind of router if you if you care about cost. So you send the more compute or higher intelligent request to a more expensive models and you send like mediocre questions, questions that do not require a lot of intelligence to a smaller model. For example, let's leave OpenAI for a moment. Let's talk about Google. So if you think Google as a company, Google as a company has got a cheaper model, which is Flash. And then they have got more expensive model, which is pro. So you can build a router or model router. There are a lot of different companies doing the same thing. So you can use one of the open source libraries. So for any user prompt, you can send it to the router. The router will decide whether it should go to the pro or flash. This way you don't have to use pro for every single request. You don't need the best model for every single request. You can select, you decide where the request should go. This is a very popular concept. These days it's not quite popular, but in software design for large language models, it's a popular concept. So I have a sense that OpenAI will implement some sort of model router within itself. So for every request based on the request, the intent of the request, they are going to classify and then send it to the right model. That is model router. The next thing that Sam Altman is talking about is the Orion model GPT 4.5 is going to be the last non chain of thought model. So what does it mean? So if you go to GPT 4.0 mini for now, and then you ask something GPT 4.0 mini is not going to generate the chain of thought, which is what the model gets a chance to think step by step. So for example, I can go here and then say, can you tell me how many times there are um, uh, full moon day in the month. Okay. So if you ask this question, it's not going to go through any thinking process. It's not going to generate any chain of thought. Rather, it is a simple auto regressive, uh, next word ge generation. I mean, even chain of thought is a model that is generated by training the model LLM with chain of thought. So, so it's simply like instead of this, what happens is in a chain of thought model is so instead of just training a model with the question and answer a chain of thought model would usually generate it with question and then the steps to arrive at an answer and then you finally have an answer so you have got steps so the training process differs it's a normal model let's say this is like um, 4o and a chain of thought model is what something like you know in o1 what they're doing so o1 also has test time scaling we are not talking about that but simply the ability to generate internal chain of thought is not available in 4.0 and 4.0 mini. And Sam Altman is saying that 4.5 or what they call as Orion is the last model that is going to be a non chain of thought model. So this indicates that the entire world is going to go in the direction of chain of thought model. What we still do not know is if 
Claude 3.5 Sonnet as a chain of thought model because they don't explicitly show the internal chain of thought. But the model is so good, sometimes we have to be doubtful whether it is chain of thought. But other than that, Google has a thinking model. Uh, DeepSeek is a thinking model and it almost seems like that is the route everybody's going to go into. I think the biggest reveal from this uh, OpenAI product roadmap update is that GPT-5 is going to be not a single LLM. It is going to be a system. So rather than having one LLM, which they called as GPT-40, rather than having one LLM, which they call as GPT-40 mini, for GPT-5, they are going to say GPT-5 is going to be a system. So it is going to unify all their existing models, O series models, GPT series models, by creating a system that will kind of know when to think long, when not to think long, just like I told you about the model router concept with different set of tasks, whatever the task is based on that, it is going to make the call. So GPT-5 is going to be a system, not a single model. It's going to be a combination of model pros, probably with a router at the start. And it is also going to integrate O3 into it. So they're not going to ship O3 as a standalone model. They're going to ship O3 within GPT-5 or whatever that they're going to call GPT-5. I think it is going to be slightly confusing because until now everything was a single model, but now they're going to call the interface, software, system, agent, agentic tool, whatever that you would like to call fancily, you can call that, that is going to be GPT-5. But I think the most important thing is GPT-5 for plus subscribers will be able to do higher level of intelligence, while the pro subscribers will be able to do even higher level of intelligence, even much higher. And how this is happening? This is happening because of something called test time scaling. And these models will also have voice, canvas, search, deep research, and more, like all these kind of things. Now, what is test time scaling? The chain of thought, when you de design a model with chain of thought, so there is like internal chain of thought, like internal, this is not external, internal chain of thought, which OpenAI does not explicitly share the raw chain of thought while deep sea kind of company has shared openly what is the chain of thought. So if you give a math problem to the model, so you can say that, you know, uh, Abdul had like 40 apples and then he wanted to split that 40 apples to five groups of people, then how many apples each people, uh, each group of people got. So the answer is like eight, uh, 40 divided by five is equal to eight. But how do you do it? You actually train the model. You say, okay, let's do step by step. Then you say, okay, Abdul has 40. There are how many people? The number of people are five. If you were to split, what do I have to do? I have to do divide. So I will do 40 divided by five is equal to eight. You say that eight is the final answer. And now this is chain of thought. Like this is what you do. But what if you have got a longer problem and then you want the model to think longer? Maybe instead of solving a simple arithmetic, I'm going to do some kind of an algebra. So instead of doing an algebra, I have to actually do like a linear um, algebra. Okay, so that's that also has an algebra in it. Maybe instead of a linear algebra, I want to do some uh, integrals. I want to do some differentiation. I want to do something much better than that. I want to do like uh, solving uh, chemical equations. So different kinds of problem require human beings to think longer. I, I mean, it's, it's quite common, right? Like if you were to write a simple tweet, you would think maybe X amount. If you were to write a blog post, you would think like maybe X plus 50% or maybe the opposite. Maybe you spend a lot of time thinking about tweet rather than the blog post. So everything requires different level of human thinking. And that is exactly where the whole concept of reasoning models or like Google calls it thinking models come into picture. Even though the model generates chain of thought, it not only spits chain of thought in one single stretch, Rather, you let the model think longer. So you give more time to the model to think longer so that the model can arrive at a much better solution. And we recently had a video. One of the simplest way to do that is you go to the prompt cache or something like that, and then just make the model wait for more time to generate the thinking token. And then you just repeatedly do this until the model comes at a better solution. There are a lot of different ways to do this. I'm not saying this is what OpenAI does. So this is test time scaling. This is one of the hottest concept at this point. How do you make the model think longer? And that is exactly what Sam Altman is referring to here. So if you say that uh, this is going to be the last non-chain of thought model and the latest models are going to be chain of thought model and even within chain of thought for different tiers of user, they are going to have different levels of thinking and the different levels of thinking we have seen, the scaling loss work with chain of thought as well. What does scaling loss means? So scaling loss is a concept in uh, machine learning or deep learning. So scaling loss 
technically means that once you scale things up, like for example, you scale data or you scale compute or you scale like the size of the model. So there are like three main parameters. Then you get better accuracy. Your accuracy increases in all these cases. That's why you have got a linear growth. So scaling loss were traditionally designed for what we call as pre-training before like when the model is being built. But now what people started figuring is scaling loss also work with inference or what we call as test time scaling or test time compute scaling. So scaling loss technically work, which means the longer you let a model think like the thinking time of the model, the better the model's accuracy is going to be, which is something that OpenAI demonstrated with the Arc AGI challenge. So if you see the Arc AGI challenge, OpenAI model thought longer and then ended up with a better solution. So looks like even with uh, different years of ChatGPT Plus, ChatGPT Pro, ChatGPT free users, there is going to be different thinking time. I think it's quite exciting to be honest, like, um, um, I mean, except that the usual hype that it's Sam Altman and OpenAI create, this seems like a very, very good direction in terms of how LLMs can actually become bigger and better than what LLMs at our raw form is. It almost feels like the natural um, transformation of how, if you remember, like in the olden times, we had LLMs, olden times. In the olden times, we had LLMs that just generated next word. We didn't, have, we did not have instruction models where we could ask a question and it could give an answer. I mean, simply like if you see like two years back, if you have seen my videos, it is all simply like you give one sentence and the LLM will fill in the blank with the next sentence. Now we moved from that to question and answer. Then we started becoming better in generating Python code. We started like giving access to tools. We started giving access to like search. And now we have like a full system altogether. And at this very time, we have got test time scaling coming into picture. Now what OpenAI is trying to do is like put together everything and then make the best out of it. I'm quite excited to see this future and then see honestly how companies like Anthropic are going to do. I think at this point, if there is like only two or three companies that are at the level of OpenAI operating at this particular scale, I would say Anthropic um, and Google and possibly DeepSeek, but DeepSeek because it's a Chinese company, a lot of US reservation and all these kind of things are there. But it is pretty interesting to see the kind of direction that they are going into. The downside of all these things is from an open source enthusiast, open source advocate perspective is it is going to become more and more close. Sam recently said that they are on the wrong side of history by not sharing the models. And if you know history, uh, Ilya was the one who was primarily against open source. So possibly they might open source the smaller size models. I don't know what is going to happen, but putting together a system always means that you have less transparency of how things are happening, what things are doing and reproducibility is going to be an issue because it's a system like a stochastic system, not a, not, not a rule based system, not a heuristic based system, not an objective system. So it's going to be really difficult for us to figure out what is going on, but that is the world that we live in with uh, thanks to nonprofit open AI. Either way, quite excited. Let me know what you feel about this. And also like if this video made sense, if there is anything else I should clarify. See you in another video. Happy prompting.